All right, so join me here on page 52. Remember, today we're going to complete our discussion of pesticides. All right. <coughs> we're going to recognize pros and cons of using pesticides. And we're going to add a news article to our ecosystem project, hopefully. That may be tomorrow. We'll see. Okay, so on page 52, don't answer yet. Don't answer. Let's just uh, review what we did the other day. So on page 52, you can see a big food web there. I talked briefly about if you pull the grasshopper out of that food web, like if you apply a pesticide to pull that grasshopper out, what would happen to the food web? There would be less food source for other animals, and the food web would be not as strong as it once was. Right? And so there was some, um, some discussion there about why we use pesticides. First generation pesticides on page 53. What was the problem with those first generation ones? Remember, anyone? They kill people as well. Dion, very good. You're absolutely right. What were some of the chemicals in those first generation pesticides? Remember, Dion? Lead, mercury, arsenic. And in fact, if you go to areas where those pesticides were once used, you'll find what? Still there in the soil. Still there in the soil. Exactly. Well done. Second generation pesticides. We had a little contest to see who could say, say dichloro, diphenyl, trichloroethane. And we learned that that shorthand for that is DDT. It's now banned in North America. Oh, sorry, it's now banned in Canada and the United States. Still used in some regions of Central America and Mexico. Why is that such a problem? Exactly. Animals are still migrating from that area, and so it still introduces uh, DDT into the food chain here, into the food system. So there's still, um, we're, there's still some traces of that kind of thing, right? Um, we talked a little bit about Roundup and stuff like that too. Then we went into bioapplication. And we played that lovely game that was invented by the smartest guy I know, me. So, my, I have no uh, disrespect for Mr. Reed. No, that's <laughs> You are a smart guy. Well, I don't know what's that. Um, we talked about bioapplication, and on the page 54 there, you can see how the top level predator, and Taylor was the hawk in our little simulation. All the toxins end up where? At the top, the hawk, right? At the top, and that's where it causes damage, right? It, it accumulates. How come the lower level organisms can't get rid of it? What's the reason? Booty? Can't sweat or pee it out, exactly, right? So they take in food, they take in water, they excrete that in urine or sweat or they poop it out, right? But the toxins are soluble in fat, they stay in the organism's body, and they just end up going right to the top. Exactly. Uh, and I think the way we talked about effects on humans, and then we sort of left off around there. Okay, so let's talk about modern chemical pesticides. So somewhere on that page there, you need to find this answer as soon as I start it. Uh, this, we're now on page 55. So who can tell me what's the deal with newer pesticides? And while you guys are doing that, I'm going to mark my attendance. Answer is B. B. Please make sure you highlight that or circle that on your sheet. Have you got yours, Neon? Your worksheet from Friday? That's no sheet? No? What's up? Have you got it here, man? Right there, man. Okay, so I'm hoping I've got something right here. What does this mean? So big deal. The modern pesticides, the one that uh, the ones that we use these days, are soluble in water. So what does that mean? It's kind of important. Remember the previous ones weren't soluble in water. What does soluble mean? They'll dissolve. They'll dissolve in water. So what does this mean? It's, this is huge. You're going to write this down. This is the key idea. Animals can do what? Exactly. We're going to use a scientific term, excrete. Did I did I not hear you, Mark? Oh, I apologize. 
This is the same one from Friday. Oh. Yeah, we didn't finish, so I just turned it into. So they can excrete the chemicals. Other, as Brody said, they can pee it out. Okay, it should be on that booklet there. Let me just see here. It's page one, page two, the bottom of page three, bottom right hand corner of page three. This is a big, big deal because now the animals can excrete it out, they can get rid of the toxins. What's the benefit to that? No more bioaccumulation. Why do you think I do this every time I say that? Because it's cool. Is it, is it not cool? Yeah. Oh, you're killing me, man. You're hurting my feelings. What does that even mean? Actually, well, the other reason is you'll never ever forget bioaccumulation. You won't. Okay, don't hurt my feelings. Ask me next year. Okay. I promise you, I will forget. I'm not taking that back. Animals can remove them from their bodies by breaking them down in the livers and excreting them. They can also be broken down within the soil. These new compounds operate like nerve gases, which act by preventing chemical messages from traveling from the brain to the muscles that control breathing of the limbs. This either kills the animal directly or makes it vulnerable to predators. But it doesn't send it up the food chain. Okay. But there is a problem. As most things are, there's always good with the bad. One of the problems with the new pesticides is A, they cost a lot of money. B, they break down fast and have to be reapplied more often. C, they're hard to spray and use. Or D, they smell bad. All of those are possible answers. Oh, yeah? Let me start the question. Maybe that will help. Oh, yeah? Correct answer, B. Most people got that. Well done. They break down fast and they have to re be reapplied more often. In other words, they're not as strong. Right? They're not as strong. They don't work as good. People don't like them as much because they got to do more work for them, but the flip side is the better for the environment. There's some other problems with them as well. Anybody see what they were? <laughs> They are not selective. Anybody know what that means? That should be they. They are not selective. They kill everything. Like Roundup. Anybody ever sprayed Roundup on your lawn? Oh, yeah. Trying to kill dandelions and what happens? Everything gone. Grass, if you've got a garden, it kills everything. Right? Not selective. In fact, it says right on the Roundup thing, non-selective herbicide, i.e. kills all plants. That's what that means. Uh, it says they still lead to bioamplification. I thought Mr. Bennett said that they didn't lead to bioaccumulation anymore. Or bioamplification. We're going to have to read about that because I don't remember that. Although somewhat safer than the older chemicals, the newer insecticides are not without the problems. First, they break down quickly in the soil and must be applied to crops more often. Second, these new chemicals are not selective because the nerve action of most larger animals is very similar. These insecticides are capable of killing mammals, birds, reptiles, amphibians, and fish. Unintended changes in the food web are difficult to predict. Third, animals that have died or been weakened by the toxin put other large animals that eat them at risk through bioamplification. Oh, in other words, if the animal hasn't actually excreted it yet, I guess. So there can be some bioamplification. So they're not, it's not the best, right? Hmm. What do you think this one is? Another issue with pesticides is they cost more than they're worth, not worth the money. They can create superpower mutant insects, you know, like Spider-Man. The insects can become resistant to them and then they no longer work. And my favorite answer for D, they smell bad. C. Well done, you guys. Well done. Braden, what's up with this insects becoming resistant? What does that mean? What does resistant mean, Braden? Hey? Okay. What does the word resistant mean? Okay, these ladies over here are chatting away here. 
Yeah. What does that mean, resistant? Brain. You don't know? Okay. If you look at the bottom of page 55, I need you guys to understand this. This is kind of important, okay? It seems the chemical pesticides have a natural shelf life because the pest is supposed to kill grass and become resistant. This is particularly true of bactericide and insecticide because of the pest high rate of reproduction. Resistant means that they no longer work. Okay? They're, it's like, um, hmm, three don't know. It would be a good example of something being resistant to something else. It doesn't work. <laughs> You know how, do you guys know how like when you go to the doctor and they give you some uh, back, or, uh, penicillin or something like that, right? Antibiotic, and sometimes it doesn't work because because the bugs, the viruses are, are not becoming resistant to the drugs and the drugs no longer work. They have to develop new drugs and eventually the bugs mutate and become resistant to that. So same idea here, right? The, the pests are becoming resistant. And this diagram here shows exactly that. Great, I need you to listen. I'm going to ask you to explain this diagram on a test. Okay, everybody look at the diagram on page uh, 55. Do you see all the green and red balls there? Yeah, I need you on this page now. Page 55. Come on, let's go. What's that idea? Alright, right there. You see all the green and red balls there? How many red ones are there? How many red balls are there, Mark? On page 55, how many red balls are there? There's no, there's no, there's no, there's no, okay, there's a top left-hand corner, I apologize. Top left-hand corner, how many balls? Two. Okay, so that's the first generation, right? The green ones are susceptible, or they, 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 the, 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 the insecticide will work on them. The red ones are genetically resistant. All the green bugs, what? Not all of them, but most of the green ones die. What's left? Four green ones and two red ones. The two red ones to get together and have offspring. What happens in the next one there, Jake? Jake, I need you to put that away. Seriously, Matt, or it's mine. What happens in the next one? But that's because you're not looking. So what? What happens here? How many more red ones are there? How many more red ones, Jake? Are there more in, the, in that third picture? We've already talked about the two in the first picture. There's more. The red ones get together and have offspring. There's more red ones. The farmer puts on more insecticide. What happens? Kills the green ones. The red ones get together, there's more of them, they have offspring. What happens to the number of red balls as you go through that diagram? There's more and more. There's more and more bugs that are resistant. So what do they have to do? Come up with a different pesticide that, um, that will kill them. That's what's going on there. Okay, you may have heard this. Manitoba has banned pesticide use on lawns. Trying to get rid of, people like to use pesticides on their lawns to get rid of what? Pretty yellow flowers. Yeah, exactly. Pretty yellow flowers that kids love to give to their mom. Yeah. This is a bit about the uh, the balls again, too. Let's let's just go through this again because I want you guys to understand this. Here. Resistance is defined as a change in the sensitivity of a pest population to a pesticide, resulting in the failure of a correct application of the pesticide to control pests. Blah 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 blah. Let's look at the pictures. What do you see here? Yeah. Nothing but green. One red one, Brody. Well done. Right there, right? One red one. That particular one is a Spider-Man. It's a mutant. It's resistant, right? They kill off a little bit of green, and then the red ones multiply. Now we got three. Year three, we got more. Too many to count. It's making my eyes go crazy, especially with my red-green color blindness. Year four, and now it looks more like one of those magic eye kind of things. You're looking for, like, the ship right crossing your eyes. And year five, what's happening? almost all red. This particular plant has become resistant. What's the deal with, uh, any, mainly you're the farmer in the crowd, right? Any other farm peach chips? Okay, what's the deal with uh, Roundup Ready canola? Do you know? No? What does Roundup Ready mean, you think? They've created a new brand, new brand of canola crop that is Roundup Ready, Roundup Resistant. In other words, the farmer can spray Roundup. If you spray Roundup everywhere in your backyard, it would all die. But if you had Roundup-ready canola in your backyard, everything would die except the 
and all that. Why is that good for farmers? If you if you spray the entire field with Roundup, normally everything would die. But now they can spray the entire field with, with Roundup because they've got the Roundup ready uh, crop and the crop doesn't die. It's much easier to apply. What's the problem then? Anyone know? You guys know about GMOs? Do you know what GMO stands for? Anyone? GMO, and that's not a new wave band or anything like that. Nothing, it's not. Hey, what's GMO stand for? Do you know? Genetically modified organism. They've taken the genes and they've, they've basically done a Frankenstein kind of thing and they've created this new, new uh, organism. And that's what uh, Roundup Ready means. And there's people that don't like it. The, the company that owns, owns that kind of plant is that possible for a company to own a type of plant? Yeah. Yeah. It is now. Uh, Monsanto owns Roundup Ready canola and all those Roundup Ready things. If a farmer is caught using Roundup Ready canola on their fields, but they haven't bought it from Monsanto, they'll take them to court for stealing, basically. Okay? And there are some instances where if the farmer seeds Roundup Ready canola and then some of the seeds spray into the neighbor's field, even though through no fault of their own, those farmers are getting taken to court because they're stealing. Monsanto's crop. What do you think about that? Is that fair? I'm just asking you for your opinion. Anybody want to comment on that at all? Mark, what do you think? Is that fair? Should we be using GMOs? Should we be eating Franken foods? No? Why not, Mark? No one really knows the effects yet, right? We haven't really tried it out. Pardon me? You might grow a third arm or something, right? I might grow hair. Maybe that would be okay. Mr. Reeve and I could get in on that program. Okay. You should have a sheet. If you were paying close attention in the news video, on the back here, you should have a sheet. And if you want to work with someone, you can. Okay? I want two reasons why people want the lawn pesticide ban. I want two reasons why people don't want the pesticide ban, and I want two marks for what your thoughts are. If you need an internetable device, I'll get some uh, iPads out. If you need to use your own device, that's fine. If you want a laptop, that's fine as well. Okay, so I'm going to give you probably about uh, maybe 10 minutes to try that.